quit goofing off. Hey guys, today is day 33. Yep, 33. And got my hand in the vase again. You know what that means. Use sponge to make marks. Okay, let me get set up for that and we will get started on playing with our sponges. Here's what I'm gonna work with today. I'm in the mood to use some paint and some paper. So I'm gonna pull out this mixed media Canson book that is 11 by 14 paper and it's 98 pounds, just like the small one we've been using, except bigger paper. And I've got out some old book pages. I also have some scrapbook papers that I like the colors of that we were using a while back. Uh, and I've got my starter tags and index cards handy in case I want to use those just to throw on some sponging and some blank cards here for that. And then I've got my sponges. And there's some sponges already made into shapes and we'll probably use those. I also have some sponge pieces that have not been cut into shapes and if I decide I want a shape that we don't have, I will make one. And then I'll get some paint colors. I'll probably use some gesso. You can use white paint and some water. And that's about it right now. So let me put this stuff away. We'll get busy putting down some papers. All right, I've got my glue sticks out. Here are some glue sticks. They're almost empty and they always have glue that's left in there that you really can't get to. So I'm going to try to salvage some of this glue and I'm gonna take a palette knife and I'm just gonna dig out that glue and spread it on my paper so that I don't waste this glue. I try to do that when I can. I, I sometimes don't because I lose my mind and <laughs> frustration trying to use it. But for now, I'm gonna take these book pages and I'm just gonna tear them into different little pieces. That's probably enough. I'm just gonna take the paper and I'm gonna put down my glue and we'll use this one here since it's still working properly. And I'm gonna glue all the way to the edge of, of the, the big paper and just start laying down the sheets that I just tore. And if you're playing along, just start gluing your papers down and it doesn't matter if they overlap. In fact, I do want them to overlap a little bit. So, but I am going to the edge because you can trim off later. But there's a lot of border on my pages, so I'm just using them. Okay, so let's do a few more. And I'm just gonna show you what I'm gonna do with my palette knife. I can't roll this up anymore. So I'm just gonna dig out the glue that I can dig out. Put it down on my mat and I'm gonna rub it in. Okay, so you see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna finish this off camera and then I'll be back when my page is completely covered. Okay, my paper is completely covered. There is a little bit of white showing through, but I'm going to be adding these papers, so I'm not concerned about it. And the glue's still kind of wet. I used a lot of glue because I was digging out that leftover glue, so normally it wouldn't be that thick. I'm gonna take this paper here that I showed you earlier, and I'm gonna find some little pieces that I like and just add it to my, my page here. Tear some more strips. I'm gonna put one right there. And just find random places that you want to add your, your decorative paper. It could be any kind of paper, scrapbook paper, paper you've painted on or jelly printed on, another type of book text, maps, anything that you want to use. I'm just wanting some color. And I'm going to go all around my page and just find places that I want to add this paper to. I'm not covering the whole page. I'm just going to put it in random spots, probably places where the white is showing through. Maybe 
some of the corners. I'm also going to be overlapping some of the papers, like this one I might put right here or here, just kind of overlapping the two. And then I'll show you what I've got when I come back. Okay, my papers are done. I did pull out one more print, which was this one here, and just added it in three different places. I just wanted to bring in another color. So I have a couple of paints out here now. I may go grab another one. I don't know until I get these down. But this one's Americana Fawn, and this one is Apple Barrel Satin Cream. And what I'm going to do is sort of like I do the gesso over my All About Scraps journal pages. I scrape gesso on top to push everything back. Well, I'm going to kind of do that with the paint here, but I'm not going to want to push everything back. So I'm just going to put a little bit down here and see where it takes me. This is all just a little journey. No idea where we're going to wind up. We might wind up at the paint store because our paint won't come out. Oh, I gotta fix this, it's clogged. Okay, it's not clogged, it's just really, really, really thick. I haven't used this in a long time. Okay, I'm just gonna spread it around in wherever areas I see fit. And I've got my little palette knife out in case I'd rather use that. But the card probably will do the trick. And the main areas I'm focusing on are any area that I just want to. So no main areas. But I do like to get rid of the white. It's like when you tear your paper, sometimes you get white and there's directions you can tear it to avoid that. But when you do that, you get white on the opposite direction that you're tearing to avoid the white. So when you use it again, there's the white side and I'm gonna cover it up. So we'll do the rest of this part with this color and fast forward. I'm going to take my fawn and do the same thing. bring in this pink a little bit that you see in some of these flowers and the pink I have is not as light as I want it so I'm just going to put a little bit out on my mat and a little bit of white gesso or white paint say it together <laughs> and blend it up a little bit and tone it down some and I really needed more white than pink. And so I put way too much out, but that's okay. That's why we have starter tags and starter index cards. And I'm just gonna bring in a little bit here and there. Okay, I think that's good enough. Then of course we have our tags and I'll just wipe up the extra and we'll have a tag that's got some paint on it ready to go when we want it. Okay, I'm gonna dry this and then we'll come back and talk. Okay, here's what we're gonna do now. I want a flower stamp, but I want the stem attached and I don't want to use what I've already got. We may use the center of what I've already got here. This little circle, 
but I may need a smaller one, I don't know. So I've got a sponge and it's dry, it's not moist anymore, and I have my Sharpie. And I practiced on, what I did was I took my sponge, I put it on my index card and I traced around it so I'd know what guidelines I needed to stay within. And I just doodled a funky looking flower. And I could cut this out and then trace it on my sponge and then cut it out, but you know, we're not gonna do that. Oh, can you see that? We're gonna take the shortcut and I'm just gonna try to recreate it here and it's not gonna be the same. It's just gonna be similar or, you know, funky in its own right. But I'm not fussy cutting that out if I don't have to. <laughs> so I'm going to, even though I won't be able to use the center, I'm gonna make my center so I know where my center is. And then I'm going to loosely, I'm not trying to be exact, I'm gonna loosely hold my my pen and I'm going to start making my flower and it's going to be bumpy so you're going to have a hard time which makes it even more funkier. Okay, that's my guideline. So now, we're just gonna cut it out. And I'm gonna do this off camera, and when I come back, I'll show you what I've got. And hopefully you're making a sponge too. Okay, here's what I've got. Then I'm gonna take my sponge, and I'm gonna wet it just a little bit, and the moisture will soak up to the stem, and then I'm gonna wring it out, wringing it out real well, and then we're gonna test it and see what we've got. So let's put some paint out and give this a go. So what color can we use? We'll just practice with this blue here. Spread it out on the mat. I may not like having the stem attached. I may want to do that separate. I don't know, kind of flimsy, but we'll see what we get. All right, let's try it out and see. Oh, I like it. That's what we have. And then what I'll do is I'll take my circle, which this is too big, so we need a smaller circle. And what I'll do is just cut a small one out of here and make our center. And the center doesn't have to be exactly circled. Just whatever you get is fine. That's probably good enough. And with that, and dry it out. And then let's test it. Oh, uh, we need another color. Let's try this green here. Oops, ta-da, okay, let's get some on there. Let's put it in the center. If you don't want a sponge center, you can draw it in, but I think this is really cute, I like it. So we're gonna go with this. Let me clean those sponges, clean this mess up, get the correct color of paint that we're gonna use, and we'll get back to work. Quit goofing off. <laughs> Okay, I was going to use some browns for my flower, but when I was looking through my cart for the brown that I wanted to use, Black Plum kept calling my name. This is Americana Black Plum, so I'm gonna use that and I think it'll be really pretty on this. And for the center, I think I'm gonna use Delta Ceram Coat Magenta. And I'll do one. What I did was I cleaned my sponges and then I took a dry cloth and I squeezed, squeezed, squeezed and get them really, really moist instead of really, really damp and wet. So they're just moist. And I'm gonna just go over my paper in different directions, first with my flower and then we'll do the centers. So first let's get some paint out on our mat. We need to pull the mat over a little bit, give us more room so that we have more room for our stamp. And I'm gonna brush it out just a little bit Maybe I'll use the palette knife. Get it kind of flat. And set the flower in it. See what it looks like? And it looks pretty good. 
It may not be perfect, but we're not going for perfect. You know what we say in this room, perfect doesn't live here. If it's not fun, I don't want to play, right? Okay. So then I'm going to put one probably right here first because that's where I'm feeling, feeling the need, feeling the call. And I'm going to smash it down, but not like squish, squish, because this is really soft. It's not like your foam stamps. This is really, really soft, and if you squish it too much, you might get too much wet, or your paint might run too much. So just, just get it in there nice, and then pull it up. Ooh, yeah, yeah. There we go. Okay, and then I'll turn my paper around, and I'll find another direction for another flower. All right, and then just keep doing the process. And I want a few off the page, so what I'll do is I'll take my sponge and I'll just barely put it in the tip, and then I'll go to the edge and I'll do like one little stamp impression there. So they're not all on the page. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna be doing. Now I'm not even loading the stamp. I'm just using up the rest that's in the stamp so that it's not as dark, it's lighter. I'll do two more. That way you're using up the paint in your sponge but you're not getting the full effect of dark paint. Okay, I dried this just a little bit and we have our starter tag that we threw our pink paint on. I put the last impression from the leftover paint on it and I want to put the centers into the flower. And because I'm not sure if I want to use that color, we're going to test it on this flower first. And I've got to find, there it is, my little center dot. And let's put down some paint. This one will be easier. I'm just going to put down the center in this. Oh, that's really pretty. So then I'm just going to go through each flower and some are going to be centered, some are going to be a little off-centered, and the ones that are real light, I'm going to very lightly dab in there. Okay, all the flowers have been dotted. We have a little bit of paint left over, so I'll just put it on this card here. Okay, let me dry this, and then I'll see what else we want to do, if anything. I kind of want a leaf on the stems, and I don't want to cut a leaf, and the leaf I have in there wherever that bag went, is not suitable. I don't want to use it, but this is a leftover scrap from cutting out this flower. I did not cut this shape. It just happened from trimming out the flower. And I'm gonna use that as my leaf. I'm not gonna take any off of it. I'm not gonna do anything different to it. I'm gonna leave it just like it is. I love when shapes that you get that you didn't plan work for something. So we're squeezing out all the water after I've gotten it damp squeeze up the towel here and I've got a paint color out this one is vineyard green by apple barrel but I don't want a dark green I really I don't want a bright green I want it kind of muted down so I'm thinking of adding a little bit of white to it just to see what kind of color I can get yeah I like that we're gonna test it out we're gonna test it on our flower here first. See if we even like it. It's not a lot of room, so we'll just use a little bit of it. Oh yeah. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> okay. Had to use it. Had to use it. I know. Someone else out there, I know who you are, thinking, yep, she had to use it. Okay. And I'm just going to bring a little bit in right there. Oh yeah, see how light that is? You can't even hardly see it. So pretty. So then I've got just a little bit left in my sponge and I think what I'll do 
is I'll just mimic where these go off the edge. I'll just mimic a little leaf coming out there. And I'll just mimic a little bit of leaf there and a little bit of leaf there. And just dab just a little bit more just to get the rest off. And we are done. I think that's it. I think we have finished. I don't think I want to add any white or black. I usually add black. You know what? I do want to add black. And I'll tell you where I'm going to add it in just a moment. Let me dry this. Okay, I've got my starter tag to test it on. And I'll, I want to take a little dab of black. I put it out of my mouth already. It's just regular black by Deco Art. And I want to put a little dot from the end of the paintbrush into the edge of the little center circle like this. I think that's what I want to do. And I might put like three in one and one in another. Okay, I think that's good enough. I really want to write on this. Um, I don't know if I should, but I want to. All right, let me dry this and I'll come back. Okay, you know we can't leave well enough alone, but I really want to write on here. So I'm going to test on my tag, and I think, and I went ahead and added two more dots to my tag too, but I'm going to take this pen, and I was going to use my Posca pen, but I don't want it really bold. I don't want it really dark. I want it lighter, like a regular ink pen look. So I got this pen out, it's Uniball Vision Elite, and it writes pretty well over paint. I wouldn't write over white paint, but um, it does write well over dry paint. And this is pretty dry. I think the area I want to write on is dry. And I'm going to test it on my tag. And then once I write on my tag, I think I'll put a little bit of black around the edges, just a little bit, distress it, and put a ribbon in it. And we're going to call this tag done, because I really love this. And in fact, I don't know what I'm going to do with this big sheet here at the end of the project, but I might attach it somehow, just have it dangling off with a ribbon. I don't know. But it's really cute. So I just want to write the word flower across the middle of the stem here. And I really like it. Um, don't know if I want it in here though. I've changed my mind what I want to do, and I wish I had another test tag. I do have this one, but it's not the same effect. Is I thought what I would do, well, we'll do it on here just to see. Uh, I thought I would write really tiny and scribbly and write along the stem. Flowers make me happy. And do that on each one. I think I will. Let's just do it. What the heck? All right, let's just do it. Oh yeah, I like it. Okay. Okay, I think that's good enough. It did what I wanted it to do. I'll show you a close-up. First, I'll show you this one. Love it. I'm just going to distress it and put a ribbon in it and we're done. And there's what the writing looks like on the individual flower. Very faint, very light, but very pretty. And where's another one? Another one? There's another one. Okay, so I think we're done and I really, really love this. I think it's beautiful and I think it's amazing what you can do with just a cheap sponge out of your kitchen. So I will see you guys later. I will see you for day, what, number 34? I hope you played with sponges and had a good time and I hope you enjoyed this. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. We're not done. I had to come back. So if you left the video, those of you who left the video when I said goodbye, you're missing out because... I add stuff at the end sometimes. I'm going around the edges with my black Distress ink. It's black soot. I'm just going around the edges just a little bit. And the corners I'm coming up just a little bit more to give it a little uh, edge that looks like it's worn a little bit. See? 
Okay, so now we're done. Okay, there's the tag. I put a little ribbon on it, it's got wire in it, so it, it goes every direction I want it to go, but it won't stay that way once it's put in something. Anyway, I just tied it on there. Isn't that cute? Okay, now's where I want you to tell me. Did you guys stay to the very end? I wanna know, did you see the very end? I'm curious. All right guys, I'll see you later, bye-bye.